Hello everyone and welcome to today's presentation on NHS jobs. My name is Lewis Lavery and I work as the career facilitator with the Norfolk and Norwich University Hospital. So we're going to be looking at how to succeed and stand out when applying to NHS jobs. And when I say NHS jobs, I mean specifically using the website www.jobs.nhs.uk. This is the main and best website to use if you're looking for a career within the NHS and you want to just start familiarising yourself with the kind of opportunities that are available and how it looks. So let's talk about the application. The application I've split up into two sections. Section one is the form. So these are all of your personal details, contact details, education, previous work experiences, your references, the declaration at the end, all standard stuff. And the second section is actually your supporting statement. This is one paragraph that is vital to your application because this is often the first thing employers will read and this is really your main chance to sell yourself for this role. You know, why are you the best person? What do you bring? What's unique to yourself? So let's take a look at filling in the easy bit of the application, which is the form. Essentially, what we're doing here is transferring all the information from a CV directly into our NHS jobs application form. And as I said before, this will include your personal details, contact details, education, previous work experience, references and the declarations. So let's take a look at filling in the personal details section of your application. You will note that some areas have a little red asterisk next to it. This means it must be filled in and is mandatory to go on to the next page. I've also circled mobile telephone and employment gaps. I believe it's really beneficial to leave some form of contact number there on the bottom, whether you do home or work or mobile. And employment gaps, if you've had any gaps within your employment history, please state the reason for the gaps below. This is important to fill in because employers will need to know where you were in the gaps and what you were doing and any skills you may or may not have developed during that time period. So let's talk about qualifications. On the top, you will see education and professional qualifications. So this is going to be your GCSEs, your college qualifications, uni qualifications. And then the second section down, you've got relevant training courses attended. So this is things like lifeguarding, first aid, ECDL. So we want to list all of our qualifications individually. If you're awaiting results, include your predicted grades. This is vitally important because if we cannot see your qualifications, we cannot confirm that you're qualified for the job and therefore we wouldn't be able to take you through to the next stage. Let's talk about employment history. So this is what it would look like when you come to entering your employment information. At the top, we've got the name of your employer, followed by their address, the type of business it is, who you're reporting to when you're in your role, a telephone number we can contact them on, your personal job title, and then you've got other information including start and end dates, salaries, notice period, and reasons for leaving at the bottom. So first off, we've got preparation, followed by time management, followed by content, followed by proofing. So let's talk a little bit about these. Preparation. Preparation. So let's talk about that. Do some research. What is the role? What, how much do you know about the role? What, what do you do day in, day out? What's the uniform? What are the hours? Do you meet the essential requirements? So this is a case of looking through that job description, looking through that person specification and asking yourself, can I do this job? Do I have these skills? Can I develop these skills? Do you have any of the desired requirements? So on all applications, there is essential requirements and desirable requirements. This is something that can make you stand out when applying for the role. Know the organisation. So for example, if you're applying to a job with the NNUH, you'd want to be thinking about our pride values. On the bottom of the screen, you can actually see these. They're people focused, respect, integrity, dedication and excellence. And everyone that works here at the Trust follows those as just a blanket rule of how to conduct yourself in the professional environment. 
company vision and message look on the website um look on their social media what kind of things are they portraying what is the message what are they trying to get across so plan your paragraph structure how many paragraphs are you going to write what order are you going to do it in how long is each section going to be these are all important things you can actually look at before you've even written a word and putting in a little bit of time to prepare can make for a much better application what makes a good supporting statement? We've just picked out a few keywords here that we can talk about. Grammar, spelling, relevance, clarity, evidence of qualities, transferable skills, keeping it concise, why you, examples, structure. This is all very important stuff. So let's take a look around it. Grammar and spelling and punctuation, this is all key stuff. It makes for a well-reading personal statement. And it also just really shows that you've had that level of education and you know how to put together a well-written piece. Relevance and clarity. Is the information clear to understand? Have you made your point? Is it relevant to the job? Is it relevant to what they're asking for? Um, evidence of qualities. So it's all good and well saying how good you are at something, but we want to know why. Why are you good at that? What have you done to be good at that? Where have you used that in the past? What was the result of using it? This takes us on to examples. So it's always worth taking a little bit of time to just sit down and think about a few situations you've come across so far, whether that's personal life, education, or workplace, or elsewhere, it's all relevant. These are examples of things that you've personally done that make you the right person for this role. Transferable skills. Everything you do every day of your life builds up transferable skills. So when you go into school or workplace and you're socializing with people, you're learning different personalities, you're learning how to be punctual, how to show up, how to go and attend something every day. All of these things can be taken across to any form of work. Keep it concise. So we don't want massive long paragraphs about this, that and the other. What we really want is that key information delivered in a really clear way and a sensible length. Structure. Structure is really important for how something reads as an employer. For example, if you were watching a film, it would have the beginning, have the middle, and it'd have the end. And that kind of wants to be the same sort of concept that you're going to apply to this supporting statement. It needs to feel correct. And lastly, why you? And probably the most important thing on that screen, because really, when we read this statement, that's what we want to know afterwards. You know, why you? Why, why is this the person that we're going to bring on? And that's really what you're looking to convey. The job description outlines the main duties and responsibilities of the position. The person specification details all the relevant, essential and desirable qualifications, skills and knowledge required for the position. It's really important to reference both of these things when you're writing your statements and really how you're going to meet those qualities and how you can do the duties of the job. So here we go. This is the section we've been talking about. This is what it looks like. Now, one thing I would really recommend is writing this up in Microsoft Word before it goes on here and then copy and paste it in. This is because it's got a much better spelling grammar check. You can really see how it looks like. You can play about with it a little bit more and you're not doing edits on the live application itself. So like we said before, we need to demonstrate here that we've read that person specification. Examples of how you meet the essential and desirable criteria. We talked about desirable criteria earlier. This is something that's going to help you to stand out and hopefully improve your chances of gaining this post. We don't want to duplicate the information we've already given. So we know your name. We know your previous education. We don't need to see that stuff repeated in the supporting statement. What we need here is new information about how you meet the requirements. What makes you unique? 
talents, strengths, transferable skills. And essentially, like we said before, why you? So we usually do this through the form of supporting information. And I'm going to give you now some examples of supporting information. So we could use your past and present duties and responsibilities, your skills, your knowledge, your experience, which is relevant to the post. Remember, we talked about relevance earlier. Identification of any gaps in employment, voluntary work that you might have accomplished, research, publication or presentation experience, evidence that you were the best person for the role. All of these things can be used to support that application and be really informative for an employer. Let's look at some writing guidelines. So we want to use clear, plain English. This means avoid using jargons and slang and tech speak. So we don't want to see anything like that on there. Keep your sentences short. Two sentences is usually clearer than one very long sentence. It reads better. It also really helps to identify the actual point you're making and draw attention to the relevant information. Remember to do a spell check. No matter how good your application form is and how great that personal statement might be, it's always going to be let down by misspelling or evidence that it's really not been checked. Um, as I said before, use Microsoft Word. It does half the work for you. And um, we just really want to see some time and effort gone into this application. Read the content back to yourself. Does it make sense? Are your points clear and easy to understand? Would you understand it if you were reading this back to yourself and another person had written it? Check, check and check again. You can't check your work enough times and it's really, really vital. The work is checked a lot more than once before handed in. And moving on from that, get someone else to read through the statement. It's very, very easy to miss something in an application that you've been scanning for hours and days or even weeks, perhaps. A fresh set of eyes, a fresh mind, just to have a look through it a couple of times. I'm sure family and friends would be happy to help you out. It's a really good piece of advice. So with that in mind, let's talk about proofing. Proofing or proofreading is really our final checks of what we've just produced. So we're looking at grammar, we're looking at spelling, we're looking at punctuation. This makes a huge difference to how the application will come across and it speaks volumes in terms of perceived time and effort. So what we mean by that is we can tell when something's been rushed. We can also tell when someone sat there and really taken the time to deliver a high quality application. Get a third party to check. We've just talked about this. It's easy to miss a mistake in something you've read multiple times. Read it out loud. Um, this can be a really effective way to see or hear things you've missed and get an indication of how well it actually reads. Sometimes in our mind, it can be very different from reading it out loud. Length. So we're really making sure it's not too long. Employers don't want to read page after page. Equally, one or two lines, that just wouldn't be enough. So it's about finding that balance, finding that happy medium and getting your point across. And last one, flow. Does it flow? Does it read well? Does it make sense? Is it coherent? Um, this is often actually found out through reading it out loud and through having someone else read your work. Please feel free to get in touch if you wanted any further information regarding anything we've talked about in the presentation. You can see our main phone number up the top there and our main generic email inbox, NNUH Apprenticeships at nnuh.nhs.uk. Equally, you'll just see our links to our social media down the bottom. We're always posting new vacancies. We've got great case study videos on there and loads of really good stuff um, to give you some insight into potentially where you might end up in the future. Thank you for your time today and we look forward to hearing from you at a later date.